You ever been confused about phrasing? What's going on? It's Jason Heath, and while phrasing is the thing that really makes music come alive, it's one of the most confusing and challenging things to learn on any instrument. So in this video, I'm going to show you my method for building phrasing into your music, what to do if you're not getting the phrasing you want, plus an extra tip for making your phrases really come alive. I've got a workbook I put together and you can download that in the description below. It's got all the exercises plus the musical examples and we'll start with my preparing to phrase exercises. I've been doing these for years. I wrote them out on the D string, but you can do them on all strings. And the idea is just to start for exercise one as softly as possible and to get it as big as possible. Start with where you're at But day by day, see if you can exaggerate. I love this first exercise because it is what we don't do well, which is crescendo on the down bow, day crescendo on the up bow. That's one of the key things that gets in the way of people's phrasing, and this first exercise really irons that out. The second exercise is more with the grain. It's what the bow likes to do, but still important to gain that control. And the third exercise, we make a hairpin with each note. And you can experiment with doing it with speed, doing it with weight, doing it with a little bit of both, different bow placements, a little closer to the bridge, a little further away from the bridge. And can you make the tone beautiful at all times? We don't want to make ugly sounds, at least I don't with these exercises, so I want to push my limits while still keeping a nice, beautiful, resonant tone. Number four is the opposite, a little more challenging. Start big, come down, bring it up, and you want to be really cognizant of your bow changes. A lot of the issues with phrasing come from the bow changes, so we really want to address those and focus on those every day. And that brings me to the variations, these prep exercises. These basically take these first four exercises and they just focus on the start and end of the bow, the frog and the tip. So variation A is simply this. It's like giving you more practice and you can do that over everything. So over exercise one. Trying to keep it beautiful at all times. You may notice for all this phrasing, I am only focusing on the bow. I'm just playing open D right now. And that's because 90%, in my opinion, of phrasing comes from the bow, comes from the right hand. The great violinist, Pincus Zuckerman, in a masterclass I was in, he said, see this right here? His bow arm, he said, this is your bank account. The better it is, the more money you got in it. B is just the opposite of A, so we start off with a long note. And we do all the variations. We can do these on closed notes too, and that's great. C is an awareness exercise. We just do a little bit of connected bows, what we call portato. And D is the opposite of that. And my goal with variations, again, is just to bring my awareness and my skill level up on the frog and the tip on the bow. Let's dig into the examples, and you can do this for any music, but we're going to go to the table and break out the pencil. Next up, we're going to sketch out these examples. We'll start with Danny Boy, just taking some simple melodies here. And I like to think of a word to start, and this word can change, but just having some sort of descriptive word like flowing or like gentle or anything like that. I think I'll use gentle for this in this case, so gentle. And I'm just trying to give myself a frame with which to think about phrasing. I find that having something like this starts to give it a little bit more emotion and character. And I sing or hum to myself throughout, so I like to go through and just think, oh, Danny Boy. So much flexibility in this melody. And I'm going to choose a starting dynamic. Oh, Danny Boy. Maybe mezzo piano to start. 
Okay, now, where are we going? And as I'm coming up with these crescendos, decrescendos, just natural phrasing, like I'm speaking to you now, I start maybe at a mezzo forte, and then I get to a forte, and then I come back. And music is no different. So I'm thinking, oh, Danny boy, and I'm just sketching this in. This is all subject to change. Maybe I'll come back a little. Okay, now I'm noticing that I'm doing other things besides just these crescendos, decrescendos, but I'm going to get to that in a second. Let's put a few more dynamics in here. Let's end uh, same as we started. So we'll do mezzo piano. Maybe I'll go to mezzo forte. Might end up going to forte. Mezzo piano. Maybe I'll go to forte this second time. Mm, yeah, and maybe I'll move this over a little bit. I think probably that B is going to be the high point. Okay, now high points of phrases. I find this to be really important, and I just either circle or make an arrow or something like that where I'm going in each one of these phrases. And I also like to kind of demarcate the phrases, just something like that. These are pretty simple. There's a little rest where the phrases are in my mind. And this is really one gigantic phrase to me. So I'm trying to go all two of these lines, one phrase, but within that I have broken up thick sentences in a paragraph or something like that. Now, I'm thinking just about a little push and pull, especially with something like Danny Boy. So, vo, 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 vi, vo, 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 vi. not too much uh, slow down at the beginning. I like the idea of stretching time, but not breaking time. So let's think. So I'm gonna take a little bit of time here. I'm gonna make a little squiggle. I use this kind of a mark for slowing down. I might move a little bit and come up with your own system. These are things that I see in parts a lot. Maybe not these little uh, bracket things like that, but um, it's definitely squiggles and arrows, very common. Back at the bass and I am continuing to sing throughout as I practice these. So I'm playing and I'm singing and I'm playing and I'm singing. And my buddy Shimon Marciniak was in town recently. Wonderful bassist. I'll make sure to link up to him. And I was watching a master class with him at the San Francisco Conservatory and he had every student sing sometimes more than play the bass. Once you've practiced singing it, you're ready to play it. And remember, alternating singing and playing is great throughout. So. Listen to what you're doing. That's my first bit of advice when we actually start playing this on the bass. Now, while you can listen while you play, and I try to at all times, recording yourself is so helpful for phrasing because it separates the actual performance from the actual evaluating of what's going on. So record yourself and listen. And just ask yourself constantly, is what I want to do occurring? And it can be remarkably challenging when you get into the finer details, and very often you will find that you are not doing what you're setting out to do. So what do you do if you're not getting the results you want? You're doing those preparatory exercises, but it's still not happening. The phrase is flat. The note that you're trying to bring out isn't coming out. The shaping you're wanting to do isn't gonna come out well. Start with the bow. And I've got a video I will link up to all about setting yourself up with the bow right, but it's really about giving yourself the tools for phrasing. And again, the right arm is the king of phrasing. You also have to simplify what you're doing to diagnose these problems. You can just play the rhythm on one note. So if I take Danny Boy, I could just go. And, and notice, uh, am I using the same amount of bow for every note? Are my notes connected? And the answer to if it's not connected is often going further up the chain, getting into the back and thinking about that. Again, that setting yourself up with the bow video digs way into that. Then add those notes. And notice, are you all of a sudden using less bow or more bow? 
what's going on there? Well, again, go back to that one note. And, and don't be satisfied until you're really able to get the phrasing you want on that one note. Then maybe add two notes. Maybe three notes. And then you finally might notice that it's a left hand issue. Maybe you're lifting up as you're shifting or you're tensing up as you're shifting. And again, just keep going back to that right hand and recording yourself and really trying to make the shape you want to make on one note. Get that right hand happening, then apply the left hand. Take everything possible away. I'm not vibrating. I'm just trying to get this dynamic shape in this connection. And connection is key. Are you playing the bigger phrase? So often we tend to play a couple notes or stop the bow a little bit between bows so we get this or like and in our mind we might be thinking oh Danny boy but what's coming out of the bass is less than stellar. So this preparatory exercise will help Getting it just on one note and really making that connection will help. Thinking big muscle groups will help. Singing will help. And just really trying to make the bigger phrase whenever possible. Phrases generally aren't two notes, two notes, two notes. They're generally a shape, just like a sentence isn't usually just one word, one word, two words. It's usually got some sort of shape. And that sentence becomes part of a paragraph. That phrase, let, becomes part of a bigger phrase. So many parallels between language and phrasing. Somebody's bored. And squeaking! Are you squeaking during my video? Okay, here's that extra tip for really making your phrases come alive, and that is to exaggerate everything. Back when I was in theater, can you imagine I was in theater? In middle school and high school, I remember practicing my lines and saying, that bottle's not going to open like that. That sounds ridiculous, but if you can go further than you need to, you will have room to come back and scale back. We tend to practice way too cautiously and phrase way too cautiously. Go for it. Make a glorious mess and then pull it back. I, it's hard to do, it sort of feels weird, but it will give you the capacity to do more. So go for that contrast in your tone. Dark sound, covered sound, bright sound, almost too bright. Experiment with vibrato widths. Really engage your entire body. And you often notice a fuller sound as you use bigger muscle groups. These should really be the finishing strokes. We think this is the key. These are usually just the tiny, tiny little touches that we use at the end. So big muscles, back, shoulders. And then again, it's all about connection. We don't want to stop and then go on and then go on. We want our phrases to connect beautifully and it's all about awareness, recording yourself, and really, really focusing on phrasing. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.